Everyone ready? Excellent. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pat Conroy. I'm the uh, Australian Government's Minister for International Development in the Pacific, and it's a pleasure to be here in Port Moresby uh, upon my first visit to Papua New Guinea uh, as Minister. Uh, my visit here demonstrates uh, is another demonstration rather of the new Australian government's commitment to our relationship with Papua New Guinea, our closest neighbour and one of our dearest friends. In fact, this is the third visit by an Australian minister in the last eight weeks. In the last eight weeks, and as I said, it, it's further demonstration of the strength of our relationship and the strength of commitment from the new Australian government to engage with Papua New Guinea. Uh, this is the second day and I've had some very productive meetings so far, including yesterday with Foreign Minister Chichenko. Uh, we had a, a good range of discussions. I updated him on our budget announcements that are particularly relevant to Papua New Guinea. They include um, a, a very significant invest, uh, increase in investment in overseas development assistance foreign aid. Uh, the budget last week increased our ODA or foreign aid by $1.4 billion over the next four years, which is the largest increase in a decade. It included uh, allocating $1.9 billion next year to aid for Pacific nations, including Papua New Guinea. This is the largest contribution, annual contribution Australia has ever made uh, to Pacific development, and we are the largest bilateral uh, uh, development partner to the Pacific, including $600 million to, the, to Papua New Guinea, which we're so proud to, and privileged to deliver. I also updated Minister Chichenko on our, our reforms to the Pacific Australia Labor Mobility Scheme, a scheme that is uh, critical to filling skill shortages in Australia, um, increasing skills development in countries like Papua New Guinea, and providing very strong um, income streams home. Uh, to give you an example of the, the power of that scheme, the average Pacific worker sends back 15,000 Australian dollars a year under that scheme. So I had very productive conversations about how we're turbocharging that scheme, making it more attractive for Australian employers, uh, increasing protections for um, uh, Pacific workers, uh, making uh, starting trials of Pacific workers being able to bring their families over for longer term visas, and uh, starting a trial of 500 aged care workers in that scheme. We also talked about our $32 million Indo-Pacific broadcasting strategy to increase the engagement of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation into the Pacific and partner with uh, Pacific Media to help develop and mentor journalists. We talked about the Pacific Engagement Visa, where for the first time in the history of Australia, we will allocate uh, 3,000 permanent migration spots annually to the Pacific for permanent migration. And I also informed Minister Chichenko that we would be increasing our uh, funding for Pacific Aerial Maritime Security surveillance by 250 per cent to crack down on illegal fishing that robs Pacific Islanders and Papua New Guineans in particular of one of your greatest natural resources, which is your fishing stocks. Uh, so that was a very uh, productive meeting yesterday. This morning I travelled out and visited uh, Quakila Village and District Hospital. And this was a real privilege to take a tour of the hospital and visit a community outreach project where I saw community health workers and village volunteers vaccinating babies, weighing babies and toddlers, making sure that uh, uh, Papua New Guineans are given the best start in life. And that was inspiring to to, to watch that process. And uh, someone whose wife is an immunisation nurse, I'm in awe of the work that is being done um, in projects like this. This is literally a partnership between the Australian government, the Papua New Guinea government, the Central Health District government and health authority and the local village that is saving lives right now. And I was so privileged to be able to visit that. And I'm looking forward to my further ministerial meetings over today and tomorrow. I'll be launching an AFL uh, partnership uh, with uh, Papua New Guinea. I'll be uh, launching a, um, uh, a development film festival. And then on Thursday, I'll be traveling up to Kokoda uh, to take part in the commemorations for the 80th uh, anniversary of the Kokoda campaign, uh, a, a campaign that really symbolizes the deep and abiding commitment between the people of Australia with the people of Papua New Guinea. So uh, it's been a real pleasure to be here. It won't be my last visit, um, but it's certainly been a very enjoyable first visit. And I'm happy to answer anyone's questions. Mm. Like, um, many of our 
Uh, thank you for the question. The, the question for those uh, who didn't quite hear it was, uh, some Papua New Guineans have participated in the Pacific Labor Schemes, but more would like to. How can we increase uh, that scheme? And you're absolutely right. It's one of the, the shared goals that I have with the Papua New Guinean government. I spoke to Mr Chichenko about this yesterday, and in fact, I, I had a good conversation with Prime Minister Marape about it in uh, Brisbane uh, a, a month ago. Uh, it's one where we want to see more uh, Papua New Guinean workers working in Australia. We think it's a win-win. It, it, it fills our skill shortage. It provides really strong incomes to families and communities back here, and it gives a uh, skilly upgrade. So uh, we're, we're doing a number of things to make it more attractive. One, we're reducing the cost for Australian companies to employ uh, Pacific Islanders to make it more attractive compared to employing backpackers from Europe, for example. We're increasing protections for workers so that they are not exploited. And we're also um, uh, uh, expanding the areas they can work in. Th this is not just a scheme about fruit picking or working in meat works, as important as they are. As I said, 500 aged care workers is a trial. We're looking at other industries such as hospitality and tourism. And uh, one of the, the my main messages to the ministers in the Papua New Guinea government is what can we do more to make it more attractive? And uh, at the moment, there's about 800 Papua New Guinean workers um, uh, in country. We'd like to see that grow. We've got a budget allocation for 35,000 Pacific Islander workers uh, this year. And so I'd love to see uh, a four digit number for Papua New Guinean um, our workers and one of my conversations will be what are the practical things we can do to change it? Do we need more training here? Do we need more assistance with the paperwork? We know visa processing generally has been too slow. So how do we speed all that up? Because as I said, it's a real win-win if we do it properly. Uh, well, well, our position on uh, the Bougainville peace process is unchanged, as the Deputy Prime Minister con confirmed. We, uh, 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 it is entirely uh, a decision for the two parties on, and the process that is to be guided there, uh, and we'll abide by that, obviously, and we'll provide support to that process and the two parties involved. We've got, a, obviously, a track record of supporting the Bougainville peace process, and we'll continue to be there supporting both parties and the pro formal process that is established. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, well, one of the key messages that I'm delivering um, in Papua New Guinea is we're here to listen to your priorities and your needs. We, we want to understand what are the development needs of Papua New Guinea and then provide assistance in that in whatever way we can. Of the 1.9 billion allocated to the Pacific, 600 million uh, will go to Papua New Guinea. Uh, we're, we're proud and privileged that Papua New Guinea is the largest development partner we have. Uh, and that, that range of assistance already crosses the gamut from health. And I was at um, uh, uh, a health project this morning to education, to security. So for example, the uh, 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 things around aerial maritime surveillance for illegal fishing, to the Guardian class patrol boats, to infrastructure. So we're proud to support 1,800 kilometres of roads uh, in Papua New Guinea in the national highways. So we're here to listen to what uh, the needs of the Papua New Guinean people are and to fulfil those. A couple of messages that I'm delivering is when we provide that development assistance, First, it responds to the local priorities, so the priorities of our development partners. Secondly, we provide it transparently. Thirdly, it comes with no strings attached. Fourthly, if there are infrastructure projects or projects with a physical presence, we are to build infrastructure of the highest possible quality. And fifthly, and uh, very importantly, we want to maximise local labour in those projects. 
Uh, we want to see a double dividend. So if we build a road or a bridge, not only should the people of Papua New Guinea get the economic benefit of that road, they should get the economic benefit of having Papua New Guineans build that road. And this is very important and that's something where we're listening to our development partners in making sure we prioritise all five of those um, conditions. Uh, thank you for that question. So the question is, why is Papua New Guinea receiving the largest allocation from our Pacific assistance? It's an excellent question. There's a few reasons for that. The most important one, quite frankly, is Papua New Guinea is the largest country in the Pacific. Of the 15 million people who live in the Pacific, there's obviously around 10 million in Papua New Guinea, somewhere between 8 and 10 million. So uh, you are the largest country in the Pacific. Uh, secondly, you are our closest neighbour. You, it's only four. People don't believe me when in Australia when I say it's only four kilometres between Papua New Guinea and Australia. And if you're a strong swimmer and weren't worried about crocodiles, and you should be worried about crocodiles, you could swim between our two countries. So you are our closest neighbour. And thirdly, we have to recognise we, we owe an obligation, a debt to the people of Papua New Guinea. Firstly, because Papua New Guinea was a colony of Australia, and that provides bonds that we must um, maintain and support your development uh, and obviously the bonds of the sacrifices that the people of Papua New Guinea made during World War II uh, on the Kokoda campaign are, is another example of the deep relationship we have with PNG. So that's why I'm so delighted to be here. That's why I'm the third ministerial visit in um, eight weeks and that's why hopefully you'll be sick of the sight of me over the next three years because it means that I'm doing my job of getting to PNG with the excellent High Commissioner and his team symbolising our close relationship with you on his shared journey of development. It, it's something that we're, we're uh, happy to examine. Obviously, one of the, the products of the CSEP, uh, our comprehensive and, uh, and strategic partnership, is uh, a commitment to negotiate a bilateral security tre treaty, a BST, that Prime Minister Marape and Foreign Minister Kachenko have talked about. Uh, Foreign Minister Wong was here in late August to start that process. And obviously, border security is one of the topics that the BST may cover. Uh, we provided more assistance in, uh, in the budget for Australian Border Force uh, staff to be more present in the Pacific, where it made sense for Pacific nations. And we're always happy to work on how, how can we secure our borders together, uh, because obviously it's, it's in our shared interest to have a stable, secure and prosperous Pacific. Thank you very much for your no, time. Thank you very much for your time. Have a lovely afternoon.